Um, um, uh, can everybody hear me? Is this working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was. It was screwed up for a, a lot of reasons. The main reason was that uh, the, the, it was bought by uh, Molten Creek, and Molten Creek was owned by two men, Joe Roth and uh, uh, Jim Robinson, and they didn't like each other. <laughs> and Joe actually bought the movie and loved the idea of monsters being the good guys. Jim didn't know anything about the movie. He was selling Subarus in... Uh, where was he? It's in the Midwest. It's in the Midwest. He was putting his money into the company, but not really involved with movies. When Joe left and said, I'm leaving you with a mad dog, which wasn't very promising as a sort of a, a, a future promise of a working relationship. Uh, she said, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I have to go. I can't deal with this anymore. Yeah. Jim came on board and he said, the monsters are the good guys. This, this is crap. <laughs> it has to change. And I said, well, we're already filming it. You know, it's a little late to decide the movie should be something completely different. And he said, oh, we, we have ways. Like, you know, um, and we got really, we, we went at it really badly. We became very, uh, very angry with one another, you know? And, and he wanted to my movie, and uh, he thought he was right because he thought this was a little way for him to make money. And uh, what happened was the movie was a, a disaster creatively because uh, everything you've just seen wasn't in the movie. Right. All the good <laughs> stuff that Mark found, what, 45 minutes worth? Uh, it's the. I mean, the movie's 45 minutes longer, but there's an hour of new footage inside. There you go. So an hour of new footage in there, which wasn't in the movie that came out all over the world. And it killed me. I mean, I, I, couldn't, even, I couldn't tell people this was my movie. I, I couldn't bring myself to lie about it. I don't know whether other people would have done what I couldn't say. So I was a lousy, a, a lousy advertisement to my own movie. I mean, I'd go on, on a press tour and I'd say, yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't say, yeah, of course, I, I couldn't say, yes, this, this is my vision, because it wasn't my vision, you know, it was embarrassing to me. I mean, this would like a slasher movie, you know, Laurie didn't know what her boyfriend was like, you know, yeah, he's a homo, what? It's like, it's like a very strange thing. I cast the whole thing as a, as a, I made the whole movie as, to work on lots of layers, and one of them was the homosexual uh, the, the, the idea that this was about a, uh, as a gay man, I wanted to tell a story which is about world within worlds, communities within communities. Gay reviewers were about the only people who understood the movie. And, you know, God bless them. There were about three of them at the time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was actually, that movie was a different time. <laughs> it was a different time. You know, it was a different time. There wasn't the same time. There wasn't the same idea that popular culture could contain nuggets of something else that could be a subtext which was valid and, and, and interesting. Especially in genre stuff. Well, I think that's probably even true now, isn't it? But I, th I still think the genre filmmaking is undervalued and, and, and under-respected by reviewers. Yeah. And it was sort of fixed the way you would fix a dog, and then and dogs don't enjoy that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so Mark... You're saying I lost my balls. <laughs> no, well, the movie lost its balls. Yeah. You're good. I'm sure you're good. So, uh, I'm going to do a quick pivot here. Uh, <laughs> Stay on Clown Balls. For you, with, um, you, you found out about this footage probably, what, like 2008, somewhere? Yeah, there. yeah. I was, uh, I was trolling IMDb and. Uh, uh, verb. Sure, sure. I, uh, it's, it's what the kids are saying these days. Mm -hmm. And I, I found out that there was missing footage because of the forums on there, and I, and I sent Clyde a text. We'd been friends at that at that point, and uh, he he replied immediately and said, "Yeah, yeah, there's there's a shitload of footage missing, uh, mm -hmm. and you know people have tried, and, and it's it's never been found." But uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, to, I, I tried to find the footage. It wasn't as though I'd given up on the movie entirely. I knew the footage. We had cut the movie together. So it wasn't as though the material wasn't there. I knew it was, I knew it shot it. Um, uh, and, but nobody knew where it was or cared, actually. You know, I went to Fox, and Fox's had, uh, 
there and there and quite an understanding of the system, but they have a huge warehouse, warehouses, is that right? And All over different parts of the world. Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not that's my understanding. Some of them, I think, are in the Midwest, is that right? Yep, like silos in so, Kentucky, but, just yeah, strange places. Yeah, I think that yeah. might be the end of Indiana Jones, you know? <laughs> 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 Trumpets into, into little slots, and, and somewhere I assumed was you know was the missing hour of of, of the night brief. Um, don't be aware, don't be care to find out. And as you know, with companies, large companies, they, the first time is these change from day to day, from week to week, anyway. So I built a relationship with somebody, and then they be gone. And Morgan Creek had never made any money out of the movie, so they didn't care about it. Um, actually, Rather more than they were telling. Well, that's a tradition. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the movie was not, it wasn't an expensive movie, and we got a lot more value on the screen than, than uh, I think we would be able to nowadays. No CGI, of course, um, some lovely sort of uh, stop motion, which was. You was know, it 12 million altogether? 11. Jesus. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we get a lot of value for $11 million. And, um, and, you know, it's. Um, a lot of that was credit to the people that I was working with, who were willing to go the distance for me, even after we had all these difficulties. And it was doubly embarrassing, therefore, to deliver to the world a movie I wasn't proud of. It was right. there's, uh, there's one thing about having people against you, but I, I'm not sure there's anything quite worse than being misunderstood. And, and to, have so your name, to have your name on this film is to be misunderstood yeah. until this version. Uh, yeah, and, and, and so that's why this is a, this is a sort of, it was a revelation to me that okay. Mark, uh, and Russell's uh, Jackson, who, who partnered Mark in putting this all together, when they showed me what the thing looked like, it was like, uh, well, I, I don't know why I cried like a baby, because it was like, when well, I was discovering something that I thought was lost forever. And it was a validation of something. It was a validation of the fact that I wasn't a complete moron. I wasn't completely off base with what I wanted to make. And that it did have the power to move people. And, uh, yeah, there were so many wonderful things in the movie. D Danny Elfman's score is superb. Yeah. Uh, the, the makeups are amazing. The performances are cool. There's so much that's great in the picture, and yet at the same time, I couldn't get that out in a form that made sense to audiences, and that frustrated me. Very frustrating. Where did you see it for the first time? Yes, uh, yeah. At home, on a, on a big screen. I, I've been ill for the last couple of years, and, and so I have to only get out and see it on a big screen. This is the first time I've seen it on a big screen. You guys? Can we say thank you for coming out tonight? Summer of 2014. We're going to get a director's cut. And we, think, uh, we think it's very important to distinguish between cabal cut and director's cut. Uh, as I said when I introduced the film, this is the kitchen sink version. I think you know what I mean now. Uh, it's all in there. The differences of quality and so on, I know it makes it difficult to see in some ways. It's hard to, want to fully comprehend what's there. I think when you eventually do see it in its primal form, and we've gone through everything, time it all meticulously, you know, leveled it all out, I think it's going to be pretty amazing. And there's still stuff to put in, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, there's still stuff to put in. And a musical number, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to believe it. There are some, there's some really cool effects that still need to go in. There's a lot of stuff that was shot, you know, 14. <laughs> 89? 89, yeah. Yeah, I was 12. He's 12. The frustration uh, has now gone away, and now it's, now it's about celebration. It's about the techniques of, 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 of reconstruction being available to us to do this. I mean, back in the day,